Hi everyone, I appreciate you taking some time to watch today's video. In today's video, I'm out on the lake again throwing the big 8-inch mag draft. Uh, you know, it's been a good day. Uh, it's a beautiful day out that day. So I decided to go out for a real quick afternoon or evening trip and uh, spend a little bit of time on the water. So let's get into that footage and then afterwards we'll go and break down the conditions of the day, kind of what I was doing, and then the rod and reel and line set up. Hope you enjoy this video and I'll talk to you in a minute. So what I was wanting to highlight in this video is in this particular portion of it, you can kind of see I've cast it over on this flat and here we are hooked up. So the key thing I want you to notice is what I'm doing with my hand because this is what you don't want to do and what you do not want to have happen. Because as you can tell, what happened was I quit reeling the mag draft and the fish completely just came off. It was a really good fish. It turns out it, that fish would have been much larger than the second fish that I actually uh, landed. But the key thing when throwing those big swim baits is make sure that once you hook the fish and you get the momentum going with the fish, do not let off the reel. Because if you give that fish any slack, it's going to throw that bait. And that's exactly what happened to me with that previous fish. So in this particular frame, be watching kind of once again as to what's going on with my hands. Because once I get hooked up on this fish, the key thing is do not let off. And you'll feel it in through the rod and through your line when you turn that fish's head and he's coming towards you. Because as you can see here, I'm kind of going as quick as I can. And then as soon as that fish just breaks basically down and just let, starts coming, boat flip. Do not even give him a chance to throw that big bait. Because if he throws it, it's over. And, uh, you know, then that just becomes a fishing story versus, you know, here's the picture of the fish that you caught. That is why you throw the eight inch mag draft. Big smiley, let's get a weight on that. So he's a three and a quarter. So I hope you enjoyed that fish catch. I really appreciate you taking time to watch it. So kind of as to what was going on on the lake that afternoon or that evening, it was about five o'clock well, no, it was probably closer to six o'clock actually when I got to the lake. So I only had about two hours to fish before dark and I really didn't want to have to stay out there too late. Um, it was on a Thursday evening, so still got to get up and go to work on Friday. But overall, what it was going on was the water was in the mid 50s creeping up into the higher 50s so we we're still around that 56 57 you know area right there but what had happened was that day was in the mid to high 70s so we were getting some really nice warm weather that came through that day and it got those fish really active that evening so as you kind of saw in that footage with that first fish well both fish really um, what I had done is I was fishing a big flat. Um, the first fish was actually, um, on our Highland Reservoirs, we have a lot of steep channel swing banks that oftentimes they'll lead into a point. And then that point, you know, oftentimes will have a flat very adjacent to that point. So where that first fish came was I had came around a channel swing and I was fishing the channel swing to see if the fish were still on that. It turns out they had moved farther onto the point and onto the flat because they were feeding. So I was actually using the live scope and that's kind of how I saw that fish because it was positioned way offshore, but you don't need the live scope to be able to target these fish. Um, you know, this is the same basic cast you would make even, you know, well before the live scope ever came into existence. You're really just casting that big bait out into deeper water and bringing it up the point. It's the same as throwing a big swim bait uphill. 
Um, I kept the boat fairly tight to the bank. You know, if you're just looking at 2D sonar or something like that, I had the boat in between 10 and 15 foot of water. I wasn't really all that deep at all. And I was just throwing out because I could visually see a lot of fish busting on shad throughout that afternoon. Now, I didn't throw top water at all that evening, but, you know, probably wouldn't have had a bad shot of catching one on something like a slow moving uh, super spook or even, you know, maybe even doing a glide bait. I did throw a glide bait that afternoon, but I couldn't get one to commit and I really couldn't get much for followers either. Um, I think, and, and this is just based upon my experience, I tend to do better with a glide bait once we get above 55 and it's consistent consistently staying above 55. So, you know, as we're kind of looking at it right now, that evening was 55, 56. So more than likely, you know, those early morning temperatures are still in the, let's just say the low 50s. Um, and that's just kind of what I, that's my rule of thumb. I, I have one tied on at all times, but I have more confidence, more success with it after we hit 55 going up. Uh, now in the fall, it's a completely different story and I would pretty well have a glide bait tied on throughout the entire fall as it just creeps down until it breaks about 50. But um, different, different scenario. So going back to kind of what was going on with that mag draft is I threw that mag draft out over the point and then as you kind of saw, that fish grabbed it, you know, like I was talking in the video, I really wanted to highlight the whole deal of when you, you know, hook set and you get that rod to load, you really want to reel. Um, if you can turn that fish's head to where he's coming to you, do not let off. Um, you know, I'm guilty of this, just like I think so many people are. Um you end up wanting to try to play the fish or, or fight the fish. Um, it, it's not a good thing to do. Don't fight it. Just reel it. Turn <laughs> turn that handle. Uh, do everything that you possibly can to when you get that fish's head turned to you, you just wind and wind hard. Push through the fish. Um, you know, a mag draft this is the exact bait that I was throwing. This is the white back shad mag draft. You know, this hook, I mean, it is a beefy hook. You're probably not going to bend out that hook unless you get like some sort of monster and it's really fighting hard. Now, you know, the lake that I was fishing has striper as well as hybrid bass in it. So I actually thought that I'd caught or hooked rather, you know, a hybrid or a big striper when I hooked that fish. I'm more inclined to believe that was a bass now, considering that second fish was a big smallmouth. You know, big is a relative term, and here in our area, three and a quarter, I would put that more on a medium smallmouth than it was big, but at the time, you know, you're excited and you've caught something on an eight-inch mag draft, and well, it's huge in that case, but yeah, so that's kind of what happened there, but still fun fish to catch no matter what. And then as you saw with that second fish, I had started moving on the flat a little bit more, still staying in that basically same water depth anywhere from, and I fish shallow too, so I, I put the boat in about five feet too, so anywhere from five to 15 is about where those fish were. Now, kind of how we had talked in some of those in that pre-spawn video, which I'll leave a link to that pre-spawn strategy video, you'll have your flat and it'll go however far, you know, a couple of feet and yards out from the bank, and then you'll start having these little drops. Okay, these fish were actually feeding right around these drops. Um, this particular flat had multiple drops but you would have about, you'd have these shelves, so to speak. You know, you'd have this five foot shelf, then it would drop. You'd have a 10 foot shelf drop, so on and so forth, out until you got to the creek channel or the river channel. But 
So basically what I was doing was I was fishing these little shelves and I was positioning the boat to where I could kind of see as to, you know, you would watch. The live scopes definitely helped, you know, target these loner fish. And these weren't really loners. This was completely wolf packs. I could see them very easily on the live scope. I mean, going through huge balls of shad, heavily feeding up. Um, so, but at the same time, if you don't have the live scope, you can still do this. Just use your ears and listen for exactly where those fish might be busting because at some points they are going to come up and probably hit a, a shad near the surface. So when you hear that, you've got your direction, you know around where they are, and then just start fan casting. The baits are big enough, they're going to draw the fish to them. So you're still likely to catch these without the live scope. It's just the live scope definitely shortens the learning curve to where you can be a little bit more um, efficient with your time when you are doing this kind of method of fishing. Um, so there were some brush on that um, on that bank too. I didn't have any sort of issue trying to get the smallmouth out of the brush because it was still kind of, like I said, more so offshore on that flat versus being up really tight to the brush and things like that on the shore. But that kind of goes for the day. That's about kind of how it happened. And then I had to be off the water. So I really only got about two hours worth of fishing in getting there at six to, you know, right around eight, uh, getting home still in the dark. But at least I got the boat on the trailer before it got too dark. Let's run over the real quick, the rod, reel, and line for the bait itself. And then I'll, you know, go over the bait real quick. But um, rod, I was actually throwing this on the Dobbins Fury rod. This is the 795. I really like this rod for the eight inch mag draft. Eight inch mag draft weighs right around three ish ounces. So it's a relatively light bait, um, you know, compared to some of the other eight inch swim baits. So the, the 795 does a great job. And because of its length, you can get super long casts with it. Had no issues getting enough distance with it. On the reel, I am throwing the Daiwa Tatula 7 3 to 1. So, you know, I know a lot of people like throwing a six to one with the, you know, the mag draft style baits. And I've, I've historically thrown a six, three to one myself, but I picked up this seven, three to one this year. And the reason that I'm throwing it on a seven is because I really, I, I like to cover water. That's part of what I really enjoy doing. And, you know, I'm still you know, historical. I love to be able to put the boat on the bank and just run shoreline. Well, when you're doing that and you cat make these long casts in front of the boat and you're parallel and bank, or even if you're throwing 45s and you keep that trolling motor on, let's say 20, 30%, this seven, three to one helps you be able to pick up that line so much faster to where you're able to keep the bait still running at that slower speed, but you can keep the boat moving without having to really take your foot off the pedal. One of the things that I noticed with like the six three to one, I'd always have to take my foot off the pedal to kind of be able to keep that mag draft running its really nice little speed to where you got the really nice head head shake and then the tail kicking really well. So that's just some of the uh, the deals that I was doing. Now line, this one might surprise everyone. So everyone knows that I, I kind of I'm a little bit uh, brave when it comes to my line sizes. This is 12 pound CXXP line uh, ultra clear. Yeah, so it's the C the CXX extra strong, I think is what that's called. But the line diameter for P line CXX 12 pound is about equivalent to 17 pound fluorocarbon. So I really didn't have any concerns about the line um, I've thrown this line a lot and I've never had issues with it, but you know, and this is something that I've really kind of dabbled with, but as you change line size, it will change how the bait runs in the water. So that's another reason I like using, um, I, I compare a lot of my lines with diameter versus using pound test. That's just personal preference, but I'm using copolymer. Uh, I really like copolymer and I've never had any issues out of it. Uh, I actually like it a lot better than fluorocarbon, and I've still not really made the transition to trying much braid deleter again. Uh, I did that, but 
So here's the eight inch mag draft. This is the color white back shad. Um, you know, nothing too, too exciting on that, but it's the eight inch. Uh, I do tie direct on the soft baits. I don't use a snap or a snap swivel. I tie direct. Um, I do not have any nail weights in this particular uh, bait. Main reason there is fish were feeding high in the water column. There was really no need for it. I can get the eight inch to actually stay down a lot better than the six. So I just don't really worry a great deal about that. Uh, I used Palomar knot. Actually, no, sorry, double clinch knot for this particular one. Uh, I use the double clinch a lot on my soft baits when I'm tying direct just because it uses so much less line than like Palomar. Uh, but that's really it. Uh, it was a pretty straightforward kind of setup that I use. If you have any questions or anything like that about my setup or any, uh, any of that. And, you know, the reason for the white back shad, just real quick, um, water was a little bit clearer. And we had a sunshine. Uh, we we had sunshine. Uh, we had a very sunny day that afternoon. So I felt like the albino pearl, another color that I really love throwing. I, I throw three colors in a mag draft, and that's it. I throw the white back shad, I throw the albino pearl, and I throw the MB gizzard. And all three of those is going to depend upon water clarity in conjunction with the amount of uh, light intensity. So cloudy, cloudy day, plus a little bit stain in the water. I'm going to throw that albino pearl, that solid white one. You know, a little bit stained water with some sunlight. Going to be throwing that white back shad. And then lastly, gin clear water with a lot of highlight, high visibility. Going to be throwing that MB gizzard. So you kind of see my breakdown as to how I go about throwing each of those individual baits. But... I really appreciate everyone taking some time to watch today's video. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a mag draft breakdown video slash what happened on the lake that day. But I really do appreciate you taking some time to watch today's video. If you've enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate that. Please hit that little subscribe button down below. That's helping us grow our channel. And that little notification bell helps you know when any new videos come out, you know, I, I've kept the routine of doing the first and third Monday of each month as my set schedule. Uh, this month, I've actually been successful in getting a bonus video out each Monday. So, but I do try to hold to that at least. Even if I'm doing bonus videos, I try to get everything scheduled to do on a Monday at 6.45 p.m. Eastern Standard. But I really appreciate everyone taking some time to watch it, and I'll see you in the next video.